Hey, good morning and welcome. If you're watching it on the replay, just fast forward seven minutes and that's when the actual show starts and we're going to be talking about decluttering. So of course, first and foremost, I want to make sure that everybody can hear me. So if you can put a comment, hey, Carrie Ann, if you can put a comment in the comment section and let me know that the audio is working. Um, I think it is, but I always want to make sure. And gosh, okay, guess what I did? I did this so you don't have to. I watched Cuties. I'm going to record a commentary on it. And um, yeah, so I watched it so you don't have to. Not that you were going to, but it's the same thing I did with when the Harry Potter Harry Potter books came out years and years and years ago. So I homeschooled our children and I taught a classical curriculum. So my point of view was when they're done reading all the classics and done with all of that, if they wanted to watch it, otherwise they or read that, they could. And so I wanted to make sure that when I was making comments on something, I was coming from firsthand experience. And I read the books and I, I, I can see why they were page turners, but knowing how to write a book and how to end a chapter and that type of thing, uh, I know exactly what her, uh, what she did. And so I know why it was a page turner. So yeah, I did the same thing with cuties. Hey, Sherry, I was going to call you this morning, but I thought I'll call you after the show. <laughs> so as long as you are still around and not out. Okay, good, Virginia. Got, got it, got it, got it. Um, so yeah, it was uh, one of those things that I felt I kind of had to do because it's right up my alley, right? And do some commentary on it. So that will be recorded this morning. And it'll probably go up on YouTube uh, later today after we do a tiny bit of editing. You know what? I might just put it up raw and not do any editing and just do it kind of off the cuff and, and make it more conversational. So anyway, got a lot of new members of the Cappuccino Club. So welcome to our new Cappuccino people, uh, Kim, Lily, Louise, uh, and of course, Edna, I think is where it starts with the, uh, the OGs. So has anybody else watched Cuties? Uh, or do you plan on watching it? Or do you even know what it is? So it's a new series on Netflix that explores, uh, not a series, um, explores uh, child exploitation, basically. So I'm not going to comment on it right now because there's a lot to comment on it um, coming up. All right, so I'm not getting any comments from Facebook. So let me open Facebook. I'm trying to keep my bandwidth down here. Uh, and oh, and a computer crashed. I lost a computer. It's my laptop. It's what I live off of. It's where all of my work is. And it's been limping for quite some time. And it finally flat out crashed. Doesn't make me happy. But you know, that's what happens. Uh, let me go over here. Vicky, how are you, my friend? All right, so it is showing up live. Oh, there are comments here. Uh, hmm, that's weird. The Cool Coffee Crew, I know. Okay, view as a visitor. Let me go over here and view as a visitor. This is what your page looks like. This video is live now. Okay, so I'm clicking on it. I go to it. All right, so I have, um, I use Bob Crush to multi-broadcast on both YouTube and Facebook. And it's showing me one, two comments from Facebook. Oh, three. Well, two. Vicky, then Connie, then Vicky. So crazy. You're not seeing any what, Eugenia? Uh, let me go over to YouTube. You know, this. Uh, uh, it was one of those things where I promised myself I wasn't going to comment on technology this time. <laughs> um, it's pretty R-rated, I would say, which is sad because, you know, Cuties is about little children. And little children are the actresses in, in it, to the girls in it. So, yeah, it's great. Love you bunches too, Vicki. I've missed you. Um, let me share this video. You're now watching Vibe. The broadcasters and can see you too. Hmm. Liz is from Mississauga. And not sure, not sure what it is. Yeah. Uh, Lisa from Kansas. Hey, Joanne. Good. Audio's working. All right. So, uh, yeah. All right. Hmm. You're on YouTube. Got it. All right. Good. Good morning, Amy. Crystal clear video on audio via Facebook. Bum, 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 bum. So, 
I took a vacation last week, very last minute. There's a resort that's only about four or so hours from me that I uh, really enjoyed and I really wanted to go to and we really did enjoy ourselves. But it's been booked, 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 booked. So my only complaint is that when we made the booking, it was a last minute booking. So somebody canceled and we actually tried to book. And then that suite got taken. And so out of the blue, I said, hey, check that website again and see if anybody else canceled. And lo and behold, somebody had. So before we booked, we said, is the fitness room open? And they said, yes. Is the master suite, does it have the big spa tub like in the pictures? Yes. So actually I have two complaints. So <laughs> my biggest complaint is that the fitness center was not open. So it's a four, it's four hours from me. So it's a drive. I'm not hopping in a plane to drive to go four hours away, right? So if I would have known that the fitness center was closed, which they told me it was open, I would have brought my dumbbells and weights and bands and all that kind of stuff with me. And I didn't. And then we got there and went, oh, no, 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 our fitness center isn't open. They won't let us open it. So I just resorted to running staircases and, you know, that kind of stuff. But um, that was that was a problem. That was a problem. Uh, Rick said they made cuties controversial on purpose because that way they get more viewers who agree and disagree. They don't care if viewers like it or are outraged. They just want viewers. That's absolutely true. So uh, Eugenia said she clicked the Facebook link and it didn't work. I'll have uh, Andrew look into that. Oh, you went away too, Joanne? Absolutely fabulous. So yeah, that that was um, that was my only complaint uh, about the retreat uh, or the the resort um, was that they told me. Oh, and then when when we got into the suite, um, into the condominium portion, there was a shower, but there was no spa tub. And so I brought the stuff for the spa tub so I could do some soaking every day because you know you soak in. Uh, this is what I did before uh, when I was really sick. You soak in Epsom salt baths and it's so relaxing and it's so wonderful. And so I plan on doing that every day. And so I had all my Epsom salts and my things and my candles and all that kind of stuff with me and no spot time. So just a shower and then no fitness center. So my plans to eat clean and work out and use the retreat to clear my body and my mind didn't work out too well. All right, I'm going to fade to black and we're going to get this show started on time. We're going to be talking about habits to declutter. As always, you know what I do. I'm going to um, talk uh, and record so that I can edit off the beginning and the end and make sure you're making your comments. Share this, by the way, if you think this is somebody, something that somebody is going to be interested in. And then I will be back at the end and answer all of your questions. This is going to be short and sweet and to the point. All right, let's get started. Decluttering can be a habit or a nightmare. <laughs> and so today I'm going to give you five quick tips to make decluttering a lifelong habit that only takes a few seconds a day. I'll be back in one second with that information. <laughs> that was silly. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Colleen. If this is your first time watching, my name is Colleen Hammond. I am a former on-camera meteorologist for the Weather Channel turned image consultant, coach, and mentor. In 30 days or less, we can revamp your entire closet to make sure that everything in there makes you look and feel like a million dollars. Today, we're going to be talking about decluttering. And right now, we got a lot of time on our hands. This has been recorded at the end of September 2020, and we're looking at still being confined with the pandemic and now we're getting into cold and flu season here in the northern hemisphere and so yeah things are expected to get worse but who knows so a lot of us are spending time cleaning and reorganizing and now that our culture and our economy has changed as well after we clean out our closets, what are we, we going to do with all this stuff? I'll talk about that in just a second. But yeah, we've got a new economy. So what we look like from the waist up is really important as opposed to uh, having complete outfits because a lot of us are on Zoom calls and we're doing a lot of telecommuting and working remotely. So the culture, the economy and everything has changed. We'll talk about the economy in just a minute. But um, if you see the names across the bottom, that is our cafe club. And the Cafe Club is uh, for people who want the ebooks and my notes from the shows, 
And on today, I have two extra bonuses that are included for Cappuccino members. Uh, and then quarterly, we have free gifts, which are going out next month. And uh, there's three different levels. So the highest level, of course, is cappuccino, which is $20 a month. Espresso, you just get the notes. That's $5 a month. That's less than a Starbucks. Uh, the lattes get the behind the scene videos and the notes and any extras. Um, and then all the big bonuses come at the cappuccino level. Uh, so that's what that's all about. And the link to that will be included uh, in the show notes or not the show notes, but the notes that go along with the video. So let's talk about what we need to do to make decluttering a habit because does your stuff own you or do you own your stuff? And maybe you have too much stuff and then it becomes stuffication because the stuff you have just kind of suffocates you. So if you're looking around and things feel a little cluttered, don't you like when you watch like HGTV or whatever and everything is just clean, neat and organized. There's a reason for that because when your eyes are seeing things that are clean, neat and organized, your brain does the same thing and it becomes very organized. So clutter around you actually jiggles your brain. In your brain, they, they, when they hook up the whatchamacallies, they will actually know that your brain is jiggling. So you can't clean clutter and that's just it. Like you can't vacuum and dust clutter away. You can push it when you're dusting, you can shove it on the floor. But then if you go on this huge like Marie Kondo decluttering spree, which I could not do, um, you know, that becomes a major project. So what can you do to make decluttering a daily habit? So what I recommend, first of all, is when you start to declutter, you want to do a little bit of an area at a time. The people who can do massive amounts and like gut their entire closet and reorganize it and do that in a day, or if they don't finish, they actually get back to it the next day and they finish it instead of just shoving it all back into the closet. Those people tend not to have a clutter issue in the first place. So if you're more like me, where you can only handle it in small projects at a time, then that's what I'm talking about today most of all. So number one rule to make decluttering a lifelong daily habit is you gotta come up with new rules for yourself. And the number one rule is to not be a hoarder. <laughs> so if you buy something new and bring it into your home, something else has to go. So one in, one out. Kind of the same rule in a closet. So when I'm working with my clients and we get a nice solid core capsule, we kind of make an agreement that when we bring something in, something else has to go. Or we are so curated with our closets, meaning we know exactly, you know, this is the one piece that I'm looking for when we go shopping, um, then you know that that one piece can come in. But in general, when you're looking at bringing new things into the home, just think if I buy this and take this home with me, what am I going to get rid of? Ah, I know I can feel you. It's becoming an issue. It's like, wait a minute, but, 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 well, of course there's exceptions to the rule, but this in general should be your new rule. One thing's come into the home, something else has to leave. We don't want to become hoarders. We don't want to path through our house. Been there, done that. So if you're thinking about it that way, doesn't it kind of change your perspective of what you want to bring into your home? right? So it's the finally your chance to get rid of some stuff. So you want to clear, clear, clear and get rid of things and sell them online. And get because that, frankly, is the new economy that we're in right now is reselling. And people, 82% of people are not buying their things from secondhand online. 82%. That's up from I think it was 40 some percent, 47% from a year ago up from 37 a year before that. So the new trend is buying used, buying secondhand online because you can get it for a better price. And people are shopping online now anyway. So declutter, get things out, sell them. I can show you how to do that, but make it a rule. One thing comes in, something else has to go out. New rule or new, new idea of decluttering is to spend 15 minutes a day to straighten up. And if you're familiar with the fly lady, she called them hot spots. Where are your fires going to start? Well, we all have that place where we come into the house and things get set down. Or we walk by someplace and we set it down. Or you have a junk drawer. 
So determine that, and I usually do it at the end of the day, I spend 15 minutes, you can even set a timer and then do it for 15 minutes and when you're done, you're done. Work as fast as you can for 15 minutes. I used to do this when, with my children when they were little. We set the timer on their bedrooms and say, I want you to work as fast as you can for 15 minutes, then you're done. And they would just go, 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 go. Uh, so it really, you'll find that 15 minutes, I, I've even timed how long it takes to empty the dishwasher because people moaned and groaned about nah, nah, empty the dishwasher. It, it takes less than a, it, a minute, a minute. The, the silverware takes a little bit longer, but especially when you have big items, boom, 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 you can get them put away. So let's say two minutes. It takes two minutes to empty a dishwasher. Why are you moaning and groaning? You know how many minutes there are in a day? Two minutes. That's like brushing your tea time, right? And that's also when I say, take your pen, put it in your mouth. Uh, so it doesn't take it, it doesn't take a long time, and it makes a huge impact. Only fifteen minutes. You can do it before bed, before you go to work, before lunch, before dinner, after whatever. Um, just whatever works for you. But if you set it at a scheduled time that you're going to do it and make it a habit and stack those habits, look at previous videos. We talked about habit setting and the importance of stacking habits. Uh, I'll tell you really quickly, stacking a habit is when you already have a habit of doing something, whether it's brushing your teeth or uh, making coffee or whatever. Uh, if you want to initiate a new habit, you, you, you stack it and do it at the same time that you're already doing another habit that you already have. So take that 15 minutes, slot it into a time and make it a new habit that you're doing on a daily basis. Idea number three, put it away. Put it back. When you're done using something, don't just leave it sitting there. Put it away. Well, it's still in your hand. And that's one of the, the most important time management and organizational skills I, I learned was touch it once. If you're holding on to something, deal with it. Don't put it down and then you have to pick it up again. That means you've touched it twice. Touch it once. So if you've used the scissors and you're done using the scissors, obviously you're not going to put it up, you know, but then when you're done with that project, pick it up and put everything away when you're finished. Uh, same thing in the kitchen. I like to clean as I go so that there's not this huge pile of dirty dishes at the end of preparation time that's sitting there waiting to be cleaned. I clean as I go. It's also easier to clean stuff while it's still wet. Nothing worse than leaving it sitting in the kitchen until after dinner, then it's hard and crusty. Now you have to either soak it or scrub it. So you clean as you go, but the same thing, put it away. Just put it away when you're done. If you get yourself and your children in the habit of cleaning up as soon as you're finished, I guarantee you're not gonna have this problem. Not only that, the other key to organization and decluttering is everything has a place, everything in its place. And if you don't have a place for something, that's part of the problem of decluttering and, and having clutter is you don't know where to put it, which backs up to number one. Don't bring something new in until you, you know, if something new comes in, something has to go out. Number four, keep your hands busy. What does that mean? Every time you leave a room, every time you stand up to leave a room, glance around. Is there something that doesn't belong there that needs to be put away? One item, just one item. Pick, pick it up and take it with you and put it away. Don't pick it up, take it with you and set it down someplace else. Oh, I got it closer to where it belongs, right? No, just grab the item and migrate things back to where they belong, one at a time. So every time you pick up or you get up to leave a room, your free hand, and if you're right-handed, that means your left hand. <laughs> if you're left-handed, it means your right hand. Your non-dominant hand should pick up something that needs to be put away. And if you're doing it one item at a time, it's not overwhelming. It becomes this new daily moment by moment habit to keep your space around you decluttered. And number five, my favorite, rinse and load. So we had a rule with the children growing up that right from the beginning, we're doing it with my grandchildren now, my oldest grandchild, uh, he's 23 months. And already when he leaves the table, he take his dish and his cup, his dish, his, his little fork. They're so cute. Anyway, take it to the sink. We pick them up, rinse it off, and then he puts it in the dishwasher. Does it go exactly where it's supposed to be in the dishwasher at two years old? No, but that can be learned as well. And another pet peeve of mine, oh my gosh, you know what a huge pet peeve of mine is people who don't push their chairs in. 
not people who don't push their chairs in necessarily, um, but chairs left out. So you walk in the kitchen, there's like chairs all over the place. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard to me. Just push your chair in. So my, my rule with the children was uh, chair, rinse, and load. So you get up, push your chair in, pick up all of your utensils, go to the sink, rinse them because while it's still wet, it's easy to rinse off. Don't pile it in the sink, number one. Number two, only touch things once. So it's already in your hand. So take it to the next step. It needs to go into the dishwasher. So it's already in your hand, rinse and load. Chair rinse and load was my thing, but here we're just talking about rinse and load. So clean the chick kitchen up before grabbing the remote. Nothing worse than after dinner, go sit down and then you really don't feel like doing it, right? Uh, once you sit down, game over. So, or game on, maybe that's why you're sitting on to turn on the game. Um, so, and the, another thing I learned from the fly lady was at night, clean the kitchen. So <coughs> children say some of the fondest memories they have is that clean kitchen smell with the dishwasher running at night. It's part of that wind down sequence. It's like everything, you know, the lights are dim, the kitchen's clean, the countertop looks good, the dishwasher's running, you can smell like a, a hint of bleach, you know, from, from cleaning up the counters. And it's just that cozy feeling that everything's clean and ready. Then when you get up in the morning, Da -da, clean kitchen. Nothing worse than getting up to a dirty kitchen. You're already behind. The day starts and you're behind. That's not fun. So decluttering doesn't have to have a bad connotation. It doesn't have to be this, ooh, Marie Kondo, we're going to haul everything out and clean and then put everything away. If you're doing it a little bit at a time, uh, then, then it makes it so much easier. So make a new rule with yourself. If one thing comes into the house, something else has to go out. Declutter 15 minutes a day. Schedule it. Make it at the same time every day. Make sure that when you use something, you put it back as soon as you're done with it. Don't leave it sitting there. Keep your hands busy before you leave a room. Look around, pick something up and migrate it to where it belongs. Get it closer to where it belongs and make sure you tidy up after every meal. Just rinse and load that puppy. It's in your hand anyway. Might as well just rinse it and get it into the dishwasher if you have one. Um, you know, if you don't, I'm come from a large family down to, you know, being um, go down to two it's <laughs> sometimes it's just easier to wash things by hand and dry it off and put it away because then it's done. You really don't need the dishwasher. Run the dishwasher once a week, you know, when you don't have that many people around. So I hope that information was helpful for you. Also, uh, if you are a member, if you're a cappuccino member, you did get free access to this already. Um, but there is a new program that I have developed called How to Make Money Reselling Online. So once you've decluttered that closet, get it, get it sold. Get it sold. I had somebody that's already made $1,000 in a less than, uh, she did it in less than a week. But yeah, it's a $7 billion industry and is expected to grow 500% in the next five years. Because like I said, people are um, selling online now and buying online. And even the business of fashion said that resale sites are coming out big winners. Forbes has even talked about it. Marketplace is talking about it. Um, I go quote after quote after quote uh, from business magazines and professionals that say this is the new economy. Four out of five people are now shopping online for resellers. There's four million items that have been sold, uh, clothing items that is, uh, already during the pandemic. And 82% of people now say they prefer to buy secondhand and online. So what's included in the program? What brands? There's a list, I give you a list of 30 high demand brands that will sell quickly online. And we're not talking, you know, some of them are like Tory Burch and that kind of stuff, but also the, the brand brands rather you wouldn't even think of that would be big sellers that you know that you got at a really good price. How to take professional looking pictures that are going to sell. Your your cover picture is the most important picture of an item. So I go through what items, what pictures to take, what angles to take, what to include, what payment methods to use and which ones to avoid. The best reselling apps for different items. You're not going to sell furniture on the same app that you're going to sell clothing. You're not going to sell electronics on the same app that you're going to sell shoes. So best reselling apps for different items. And then how to price your items. That's just a fraction of what's in there. 
Um, and this is going to be sold for $197. There is a limited special uh, time offer until Sunday night. It will be $27. So again, if you're watching us on the replay, what is Sunday night? I should probably look that up. <laughs> the 27th, September 27th of 2020. And then the price goes up. So if you're a Cappuccino member, that was your bonus for last month. You got this for free uh, because it wasn't done. <laughs> so I said, hey, just go in there. I got a lot of great feedback from people. And <coughs> excuse me, um, that was very, very helpful. So the feedback that I got, oops, wide shot, uh, the feedback I got from people was very, very helpful for me finishing up the program. And it's super simple, but I did all the research. Why? Because when my mother passed away uh, this spring of COVID, supposedly, um, we had uh, to liquidate her estate. And you don't do garage sales anymore. I don't know if you know that anymore, but especially now, with social distancing and whatnot, how do you get rid of your stuff? I'll just put it on Facebook Marketplace, but then where do I go? What do I do? How do I take the money? Um, where do I meet these people? Who's in charge of transporting the item? I mean, I put all that kind of stuff in this course because I had to research it and learn it. I didn't know how to do any of this. And then I thought, you know, when I started reading all these articles where major retailers, we're talking like Nordstrom's, Macy's, um, the list goes on and on. What they're implementing now and planning to implement are buyback programs where they will buy it back from you and then resell. So they're developing their own reseller outlet, kind of like thread up. You know, so um, yeah, it's there's it's twenty seven dollars. Everything's included in there. I'm actually still not done with it. I'm still putting some new videos and audios in there to help you along. But I uh, had a recording problem when my laptop crashed. I took everything I had already recorded and was editing, and I didn't back it up. So it crashed and I was done. So anyway, take advantage of that. The link are in the comments to this video, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Again, the price is going to go up on Sunday, the 27th. So take advantage of it. You may not need it now, but I guarantee you this is the new economy. You will need it in the future. And once you're in, you have lifetime access. And there's already, I'm still live on the air and there's already two people that are in. So good for you um, because I'm going to be doing a webinar on that too to help the people who are already in there uh, take advantage of it and answer all of your questions. All right, so that's it. Those were your five tips on how to make decluttering a lifetime daily habit. I hope it was helpful for you. If you're not following me yet, click the little follow button over here if you're on YouTube and make sure that you um, get the notifications if you're on Facebook. All right, that's it for this week. Take care. God bless. I love you. Thank you for joining me. I mean that because our time is valuable and the fact that you spend this much time, especially if you got this far, I appreciate that so much. All right, take care. God bless. We'll see you next week. Bye. Oh, that was weird. All right. So, yeah, I couldn't find my notes when I did my open, so that was kind of crazy. <laughs> All right, let me go look at questions. All righty. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, stuffication. Yeah, that's a thing. Okay. Wait a minute. Where are, my, where are my notes? Where is my, there it is. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, don't tell me I closed it. I closed comments. You know, I took one week off, just one week off. And I'm already forgetting stuff and closing windows that don't need to be closed and Oh, receiving. Okay, now I have to go back and look. All right, so let me go over to Facebook. All righty. Okay, Facebook isn't working. Hey, Kathy's here. I did have a lovely vacation. Thank you. I went away last week. It was fantastic. Girls got to get her fitness on. That's right, Vicky. It was horrible horrible, horrible, horrible when I got there and they were like, the fitness center was closed. I actually kind of lost my temper, which I usually don't. So anyway, um, 
Okay, 82%, yes. Um, Kelly said, we have a huge picnic table as our dining room table when the children were little. The bench was attached. Yeah, easier to move everything when it's time to wash the floor. That's so true. That is so true. All righty. Oh, there we go. Oh, Rick says that there's a sink problem. Uh, sometimes that happens because we multicast. So by the time it goes up, goes into the thing and comes down, the audio can be a little bit ahead. Uh, and that's very frustrating. Valerie Lynn is here. Victoria's here. Uh, yeah, isn't that nice? The um, And thanks for sharing, Vicki, by the way. Uh, the coffee themed, I know, because it's espresso, latte, cappuccino. Uh, Kathy says her brain definitely jiggles when she sees clutter. That's for sure. <laughs> I have the brain jiggles, said Valerie. <coughs> when are you moving into the new house, Victoria? Uh, friends invite me over to clean their closets. Ah, you're one of those. You're one of those. Leanne can take us if can verify. It's hard to get rid of things. Aha. Uh -huh. This is why we have a, a clutter problem, isn't it? Habit, that's right. Vicki always has some uh, a, a good acronym. Having actions become instinctive tendencies. I oh, love that. So dishwasher emptying challenge. It's a first world problem. It really is, Vicki, isn't it? It's so funny that, you know, I, I watched uh, Life in uh, the Caribbean or Moving to the Caribbean, I think it is. Anyway, I, I love watching the shows about moving to um, different countries and, and that type of thing because you learn different things. And the thing I've noticed about watching 15 seasons of Moving to the Caribbean First of all, I used to say Caribbean, and apparently it's Caribbean. But uh, there's one on moving to the Mediterranean. There's one on, I, there's not one on moving to Australia. Vicki, you need to get on your country people about that, because Australia is actually one of the places I'm looking. But anyway, one of the things I noticed about the Caribbean was that a lot of these places that people are looking at don't have dishwashers. And they obviously don't care about their kitchens because they don't, there's places that people look and there's no ovens, there's no, um, like the cooktops only have two burners and there's, you know, so you're looking at this three bedroom, three bath, 3,000 square foot home with a galley kitchen. So apparently maybe they just reach outside and grab fruit and eat it. I, I don't know, but they don't seem to pay attention to their kitchens. And then when they do, like people are amazed when there's a dishwasher. There's a dishwasher in here. And people are just so excited. Oh, this kitchen has a dishwasher. Is that not a normal thing? Well, like I said, for me, you know, being down to two people, it's just like you know, a lot of times you just, instead of rinse and load, you wash and dry and put it away. So, but I'm telling you that rinse and load thing with the children was huge. Touch it once. <laughs> Waking up to a clean kitchen is bliss, says Vicki. Great tips as always. Thank you. Uh, handling, oh, I know I've watched you're doing Rich's, uh, the estate sale. Whew. Yeah, you have to do it online and it is brilliant. There's so much easier. Matter of fact, there was a couple of things that I saw in that estate sale. I'm like, hmm, I like that. But just the thought of getting it here from, you know, New South Wales is just a big problem. We're allowed garage sales here, but most people keep it all outside and they're not as popular as they once were. And and that's becoming a huge, huge, huge issue and a trend, Amy, is that garage sales aren't a thing. And in some places you have to get permits and you have to advertise it and you have to. So some areas, I think Southern California is probably one of the worst places I've heard. I know there's other places as well, but you can't just put something outside with a price tag on it anymore. There's places that, and some HOAs, you know, homeowners associations aren't allowing that. Um, some city government type issues are going to have, you can't do that anymore. Um, and the trend for online right now, especially the last six months, we have just gotten used to doing everything from our computers. It is a new economy. And when I started reading, because I like to read business magazines and, and websites and that type of thing anyway, um, and I started reading all of these retail professionals saying we are moving, and major retailers are moving into it. You got to learn how to sell online. And like I said, it's $27 right now for the course. Uh, it's going up on Sunday, the 27th. You may not think you need it right now, but it's one of those things where you can teach your children. And I have people that, my goal is to get you to make money your first week so that it pays back the cost of the course. 
And I actually invested in an $800 course that somebody else had. And I'm close, I'm like getting close to the end of the refund period. I don't like getting refunds. I really, really don't. But her $800 program has less in it than my $27 program. So it was, yeah, not a good thing. Uh, Valerie says she's been downsizing three adult children and moving out by October 1st. Wow. <laughs> And Victoria says they move October 2nd, so it's coming up fast. Uh, Rick's sync problem was sync problem given the content of the show. I know, he, she thought sync, S-Y-N-C, when Rick said he was having a sync problem. It was like, <laughs> you mean your kitchen sink? No, the audio and the video is syncing. <laughs> Terry says she doesn't even like dishwashers. I don't think they clean very well. I consider washing my dishes by hand, therapeutic. You know, it's a good bonding time too. If you, you know, your spouse or child or somebody else, you do it together, you wash and you can have conversations. Um, and truly, if you rinse it in hot enough water, if it's super, super hot, I always wear gloves when I do it anyway. So you put hand cream on and then put your um, kitchen, the gloves on. Um, when you put your hands in the hot water, it helps, you know, that soak into, it's like very spa moment. But yeah, if your water is hot enough and then you put it in a rack to dry, it'll air dry so fast that you really, there's not much to do. You know, there's not much drying to do. So hotel life for 20 days in a hotel. Ooh, I did that our first three months when we moved to, from Atlanta to Dallas. Uh, IBM put us up in a hotel and I had you know, three small children, four, two, and new, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a, how many months? He was like five, six months old. And we were in a tiny little apartment for three months. It was horrible. Horrible. Uh, a lot of people don't like dishwashers. Interesting. This is funny. Sentimental pieces. Yeah. Always offer brilliant value, Colleen. Thank you, Vicki. Bonus hand care tip. That's right. That's right. Uh, let me look over uh, let me see. I'm not getting a lot of comments on YouTube now. It's funny because YouTube was the huge one first. Um, and then now it's be, um, now it's everyone's commenting over on Facebook. So it's funny. And Rick says it takes a long time for me to empty the old dishwasher in my apartment because it never dries everything. Ew. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's a pro I have a super expensive dishwasher. So it's one of those dishwashers you can be standing right next to it and you cannot even hear it running. You don't even know it's running until you open and go, whoa, <laughs> here comes the steam and all that kind of stuff. Um, also to save electricity, I don't use the dry cycle on it. As soon as it's done, I open it so it can air dry because it's all hot and steamy and it'll air dry really quick if the water's hot enough. Um, my dishwasher also has like a little garbage disposal thing in the bottom of it. So it, it kind of filters out and grinds up. <laughs> it's a nice dishwasher. <laughs> it has three shelves. Yeah, I really like it. Um, but it's one of those things where if it breaks down, it's really hard to repair it because it's a high-end dishwasher. But yeah, so it, it gets really super hot, but I don't use the dry cycle on it um, just to save the electricity. I figure if you open it right away, when the dishes are still hot and steamy, they'll dry off. And so I'll let it go for a second. And then, you know, some like cups or dishes or whatever on the bottom side, convex concave, that so they hold water. Uh, and I'll just to grab a towel and wipe that out, that, that water out of those little dips. Um, Cause nothing worse than when you're emptying the dishwasher, everything's dry. And then you have a cup on the top shelf that had water in it. And when you pick it up, it dumps and then everything's wet. You can't put things away wet because that's mold and mildew. So then you have to hand dry it and it just becomes a real. So I, I just find that when you take care of the things up front, it's the same thing with organizing. And I'm, I'm right brain, left brain. So I'm a little bit of both, but my mother was extremely left brain. So super organized, super organized, like over the top, God rest her soul, over the top organized. Um, so yeah, crazy. Uh, we have a system set up. I cook, he cleans up, including dishes. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's, 
you know, we we tried that with our children. Didn't work because the, the person who cooked would make a massive mess and then somebody else had to come in afterwards and clean up. So you would have this great gourmet meal, but then afterwards this huge mess. So we became, we changed it to when it's your day in the kitchen, you it's your day in the kitchen. So, but through adults, it works a lot better with the children. It did not. It did not. Kids are bouncing off the walls. I will bet. You, you know, it's one of those um, situations where we had to plan an outing every day. And thank God in Dallas, the weather's nice most of the time. New Jersey, probably not as much. Terry had a great suggestion. Instead of uh, a dishwasher, put a wine cooler, a wine refrigerator in that, that area. Yeah. So organized that daddy couldn't find a thing. <laughs> well, everything had a place and it was in its place. And God forbid if it came out of its place, you you know, she had a thing about making sure the surfaces, countertops and everything were always, well, the whole house was organized. Uh, so I learned, so it's kind of a nature nurture thing. By nature, I'm very right brained. By nurture, I have to be really organized. So when I see clutter, it just bothers me because I did not for 18, 17 years, um, I lived in a home that, I never had any clutter in it, none, none whatsoever. Everything was organized and everything had a place. And, and that's the other thing about living a minimalistic lifestyle when you don't have a lot of stuff, you don't have to worry about that organizational issue because there's you, everything has a place that's in its place and you don't have to worry about closets and storage. And, and that's the other thing about watching this show about moving to the Caribbean where people was like, where's our, we don't have any storage here. We're going to put all of our stuff. So they'd be moving from like a 3,000 square foot home in St. Louis to a 1,100 square foot condo um, on St. Thomas or St. Croix or whatever. And they were like, where are we going to put all our stuff? Well, first of all, you're not going to ship it. You know, you have a different lifestyle and a different climate and everything. You're going to sell all that stuff off online. Um, and then uh, secondly, um, yeah, you're, you you can be more minimalistic if you're reducing your space by two thirds, going from three thousand feet square feet to one thousand square feet. That, that's a big decline. So, especially the storage pantry in the basement. There you go. <laughs> yeah, God forbid the lock on that pantry, right? Um. So uh, Valerie says, my house was the same way growing up. Having 10 children knocked me off that pedestal. I'm gaining ground again. Absolutely. <laughs> children will do that one day. <sighs> That's really hard. Rex says, keep them in your prayers, dealing with the aftermath of the hurricane and the death in the family. Oh, I'm so sorry, Rex. Uh, yeah, anybody else have um, any prayer requests that we want to throw in here too? I don't know why this is not giving me the same. Oh, it is actually. Okay. I'm just used to having more comments. Um, so any who's, um, let me double check this and this and this. Okay, good. It's all working. I'm so happy when it works. So yeah, I was only gone a week. I miss you guys. Working on a new employee, um, that seems to be going very, very well. If you'll notice a very consistent and very nice social media posts coming out. Um, Janet asked me earlier about how to deal with online comments and I don't know what happened, but boy, the Catholics and Christians are out in force sending me hate mail. I don't know what, what the deal is. So, um, and, and it's funny, I was talking to somebody who just asked a question yesterday, which I thought, okay, here's a person with a level head. So I appreciated her comment. I'm not going to use her name because I don't have permission. But anyway, her comment was, um, I saw that you posted something and I don't know, it doesn't seem consistent, but did... So she assumed the best, right? Other people see things and they assume the worst. You know, you're a pagan, you're this, you're that, you know. So I've been getting a lot of really nasty emails and comments from people lately who are assuming things that aren't true. So it probably, it'll probably be the same thing when I come out with this commentary on cuties. I'll probably get a lot of attacks from people saying, why did you watch that? Well, I think it's important to, to contribute a conservative commentary to something that, you know, at first glance seems totally wrong. Um, talked about it with a, a friend of mine who um, 
is a psychiatrist and she watched it as well, which, and so her and I had a very interesting conversation where she doesn't think it's a good thing necessarily, but she looked for the positive in it where how they handled different circumstances um, were, were in a good way. But I don't think you have to show so much bad and, you know, I think you can do the same thing with an article or a blog or a commentary as opposed to making a full-fledged video on showing, you know, showing, actually showing child exploitation. It's really bad. Hey, Estella, I need to embrace the new technology. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's why I made such a detailed walkthrough of, of exactly how to do uh, selling online uh, and teach your children. Here's the big thing. Your children really need to know they're being raised in this new economy. Your children need to know how to do this as well. So if not for you, and quite frankly, it's something that you could delegate to your children and say, here, $27. I bought this program. Go learn how to do this. And here's all the stuff. Go sell it. I'll give you 10% or whatever you sell. So then you're tasking your children in the new economy to learn how to make money in the new economy. And they're getting 10% of whatever your stuff they sell. And if they're selling their stuff, they can keep 100% of it. It's a good way to get them to clear out their closets too. Um, a lot of people are just saying they don't want to be dealing with it. So they're just loading it all up and dumping it off at Goodwill or a donation center or a thrift shop or whatever. Fine, if that's what you want to do. But I think it would be better to teach your children how to make their own money. Uh, this is a new economy that we're going into. Things will never, ever, ever be the same. It's the same thing after 9-11. Things are never going to be the same. You know, so we have to learn to um, sink or swim. Have to learn to sink or swim. Valerie said, please pray for two friends who have parents who are in the end stages of life. Wow. Wow. Prayer certainly. Um, seems to be a lot of that going around lately. I don't know what it is, but yeah, get, get, um, get those prayers going. Um, we all, we all need as many prayers as we can get. And I'm starting a new, met with my doctor yesterday and when I had some lab work done and went over my labs, oops, <laughs> I've kind of let things fall by the wayside. Uh, and I started drinking coffee again, uh, two weeks ago. Well, actually on vacation. So a week and a half ago, uh, because I forgot my tea. And they had coffee there at the resort. And so I just started drinking coffee again. And coffee makes me inflamed and I swell all up. So I'm swollen like a tick. Um, so, and, and what am I drinking this morning? Coffee, because it was in the kitchen. It was done already and it was easy and I didn't make my tea. I was very, I, I was very lazy. I could fill a Goodwill trailer. That's funny. I should fill a Goodwill trailer, says Minette. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Amy says, you have a very broad audience. It's unreasonable to think that you ignore some in favor of others. Thank you. Discussion on topics is not wrong, even if the topic is distasteful. It is how we learn about others and practice our critical thinking. Absolutely. That that was kind of my reply to this one person who raked me over the coals publicly. I mean, she didn't send me a, sign, a private message. She posted it publicly um, on a platform I don't use that often. So it took me a week to see it. So it was sitting out there. So I thought, well, it's been out there a week. I'll just leave it up because sometimes they don't, I, I'll just leave things up. Or sometimes if they use foul language or whatever, I'll delete it. But, um, I, I just thought it needed to be addressed. And so I, I replied, um, it was very, very sad. I, you know, it's like, and again, it goes back to the Teddy Roosevelt quote. That's my favorite. Thank you, Brene Brown, because that's where I, I found it. Um, the first time, well, I'd read it years ago, but anyway, it's the, in the arena. So who do you take advice from is people that you're shoulder to shoulder in battle with that are actually doing the same things that you're doing. It's very easy to sit in the bleacher seats and throw tomatoes, rotten tomatoes, and, you know, criticize other people and say they should do it differently. You shouldn't, well, you know what? You go do it. Don't tell me how I should do it. You show me how you do it. And now I can see sending a private note and you know how I feel about the Oreo cookie method, compliment, criticism, compliment. So if you're going to send something, somebody a suggestion, make sure you surround it with the two things that they're doing well, you know, um, and always assume the best. Don't assume the worst when you're when you're reaching out to people. Uh, but, but from this end, when you're in the public arena and you're in the public eye, and quite frankly, in social media, 
All of us are. So if you feel open to criticizing me, guess what? Expect, you know, do you want me to come to your private page, look at something you've posted, assume the absolute worst and rake you over the coals for it? Because you can't turn around and say, well, you're in the public eye. You need to expect, you you know, you have to expect that. You know what? We're all in the public eye. Thanks to social media, we are all in the public eye. So I'm going to start coming to your pages and start blasting you. First of all, that's not something I would do. Second of all, ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, how do these people have time to, you know, come and, and spend so much time criticizing other people? I see critical comments on, on everybody's posts. You know, it seems like you can't post anything without some troll coming in and saying something nasty to you, right? So ain't nobody got time for that. And and what good does it do, thirdly? What good does it do to cut other people down? There's just too much to be joyful and happy and grateful for in this world. And if somebody's doing their gig, that's their lane. I'm in a different lane. I'm just going to leave you in your lane. You know, um, I made a mention about CBD, and people blew up. Oh, you're smoking weed. I'm not smoking weed. I don't have any, I, you know, somebody's doing it. It's legal in 33 of the 50 United States. And there's a reason for that. Study the science. Study the science. So I get criticized for that too, because people don't know what they don't know. So I've been studying the endocannabinoid system. In the human body, there are cannabinoid receptors that are built into the human body. So I've been doing a lot of research on it. So yeah, I made a mention, I'll probably get comments on this too. I mentioned CBD oil and, and hemp oil. And, um, you know, there's a difference between Delta 8 and Delta 9. Um, there's indica and sativa. I mean, I've researched this. I'm really looking into it. And so when you make one comment, there's this knee-jerk reaction. Oh my God, you're promoting, you know, um, Oh, what do they call it? Gateway drugs. That's not what I'm saying at all. Again, it's assuming the worst and jumping to a conclusion. So a commenter called one of my YouTube videos, I'm a leprechaun, said Vicky. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Ah, it's so goody. Uh, thank goodness for the cons uh, the constant of coffee calling in these uniquely uncertain times. Yeah, it is very unique, isn't it? In, in the history, the history. I have a friend of mine who actually has a breathing disorder, and she cannot wear a mask. And she went out into public with her four year old son, I think, and a group of people attacked her. Not like physically attacked, but they surrounded her. Like They came up to her. This one person came up to her in the store and started yelling at her for not wearing a mask. And she said, I actually have a medical condition. I can't wear one. Well, then you shouldn't be out shopping. You should somebody else send somebody else. She can't afford to send somebody else shopping for her. And then somebody else passing by jumped in on the attack. Next thing she knew, she had three or four people standing there um, criticizing her for not wearing a mask in front of her child. And she has a breathing disorder where she can't. So she has a medical condition. And they said, well, we want to see your documentation. Where's your document? I don't go shopping with my documentation. <laughs> oh, my gosh. A poor thing. So then she commented on it on Instagram and started getting all sorts of hate mail for um, the, the same thing. <laughs> Maybe people are just crankier because they're home. I don't know. But um, yeah, let's love and support and uplift each other and pray for each other. Gosh, yard sales are out of the questions. I know, can't really do it. I don't know if you can do it in Florida. I don't even know if we can do it here in Texas. Um, I just know that online is the way to go. So I'm gonna be, I am gonna be doing a webinar about this probably next week. So if you wanna get in on the $27 price that's now, uh, next week when I do the webinar, it's gonna be um, much more expensive. Um, so yeah, take advantage of that. All right. Oh gosh, we've been on an hour. Yappity yap. <laughs> um, yeah, I missed you guys. I really do want to start doing these again on a more consistent basis. Um, and uh, the nice thing about um, Facebook, I'm going to give Facebook a compliment that doesn't happen very often, is I can go back to my live videos and clip off the front and the back chit chatty part so and just leave the 15 minute portion. So that's really nice. Um, and I, I wish there was a way to do that on YouTube. There's not, but Facebook did make it away. Masks and social distancing are literally causing insanity. I swear it must be true, Rick. It must be. Oh, God. 
Um, let me see. Uh, Rex is commenting to Vicky. Discouragement is straight from hell. Yeah, that's very true. Um, Amy says CBD is not the same as smoke and pot because of the polarizing nature of the media coverage on Rona. People are believing that we cannot do our own research on anything involving science. That's true. Looks like Valerie's bowing out and have a beautiful day. Um, so yeah, we need to, we, I need to get going because I have to do these recordings. I've got a call with my marketing manager today at three. I've got family dinner tonight. I've got all these recordings. I have to follow up with my doctor. Um, well, there's so much on my calendar. Matter of fact, I just got a notification. I wonder if I'm supposed to be here right now that I'm not. No, good. I just got a notification on my phone and I panicked. I thought I'm, I'm supposed to be somewhere. I'm usually really good about uh, getting that taken care of. All right. Thanks for joining us. Um, and send in suggestions on things that you want to hear about. We've got things mapped out really for the next month or so, but I really would like to start doing this more than just once a week. We'll see. All righty. Uh, again, make sure that you take advantage of the $27 special limited time offer on the how to sell and make money reselling online. Take care, God bless, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.